In this video, I will tell you why I moved from the pedal supplied with the T300 RSGT, the T3PA, to the Thrustmaster TLCM, and try to explain why you need a load cell pedal in your sim racing life. And all from an older gamer's perspective. Over the years, I've used a number of different pedals to sim race, some good, some bad, some absolutely terrible, until eventually I became aware that there was something far better than spring things attached to potentiometers. Load cell brake. Load cell pedals. Load cell brake pedal. Load cell brake pedal. Load cell pedals. Load cell pedals. Load cell pedals. The load cell. Load cell kit. But for some reason, I still couldn't see what they were getting at. And then I bought the T300 RSGT, which came bundled with the T3PA, a set of pedals that was supposed to be quite good. However, it took me a mere six weeks of struggling with the bloody things to realize they were a springy nightmare of inconsistent braking. Even the conical brake mod supplied in the box by Thrustmaster as an apparent admission to how bad the brake pedal actually is, gave me nothing more than a slightly better feeling up to about 50% brake pressure before it jumped all the way up to 100% braking with just the slightest bit more pressure, which in turn tended to lock the car up. Not ideal for consistent lap times. That sucks. So, after much soul searching, I decided to upgrade to the Thrustmaster TLCM. Side by side to the T3PA, you can see the TLCM is a much more robust and weightier pedal set, giving that overall feeling of something that was designed to be used up to and beyond the limit. They also feature a better tactile feel on both accelerator and clutch. Not much difference, but enough to feel like this is actually a car and not a sim racing pedal set. And of course, they also feature the much coveted load cell pedal. In this case, one that is highly customizable and would finally give me that lifelike feeling of braking in a real car that I had long been searching for. At last. Changing the springs on the TLCM is effortless, requires no tools and dare I say could even be adjusted on the fly to suit the car you intend to drive. They aren't actually as quick to change as the quick release wheel, for example, but they come damn close. After some testing, I settled for the firmest spring, the red one, and placed it at the bottom of the stack with the second firmest spring, the black one, at the top, with the silver pre-compress in the middle containing zero spaces. If you prefer no pre-compress at all, you can just pile the supplied spaces into this middle spring area and this eliminates the pre-compress completely. It really is that simple to set up and change the springs and play around with them until you find the combination that works for you. People with a lighter foot can also fit the white spring which offers a whole lot less tension and is probably suitable for younger sim racers. Yes! If you don't like any of the springs, then the third party elasticators can be bought from a variety of places. I haven't bothered with those just yet, but it will be something that I will review once I've got some experience in using these pedals with their stock springs. Once that's done, you calibrate the brakes using the supplied software. I prefer to connect the pedals via the USB as the pedals offer 16 bits of resolution as opposed to 12 when using the RJ12 connection. I also like to disconnect some devices when not in use via a switched USB hub. This prevents any possible conflicts occurring when I use my joystick in flight sims and my wheel in racing sims. Using the software, you can also set the dead zones for all pedals, which is really handy and saves you having to do it in every single game you play. I have a dead zone set at the top end of the throttle to try and persuade my foot not to mash the pedal through the ground to get that tiny bit more speed on the straight. This never works. And a dead zone on the bottom end of the brake so that I don't end up adding any braking whilst resting my foot against the pedal. I know, bad habit. And here, you also set the amount of pressure you want to apply in order to get 100% braking. It's not very time consuming to set this up, just a bit fiddly. And you will of course be tempted to return to this place and fine tune it a bit more. Just be aware 
of the law of diminishing returns. No, it's not worth it. Once you're happy with these settings, once you have the springs you like and the calibration adjustments that work fine, you are ready to race. Except, no you're not. The truth is, these pedals are way different from what you've probably become used to when sim racing, and there is a learning curve to using load cell brakes. One that will probably mean, initially, your lap times will be slower and your crash rate will be higher. How long it takes you to adapt to this learning curve will probably depend on how much real life car driving experience you actually have. The load cell pedal is very much like, although not entirely identical, to an actual car. And as I have been driving now since Noah was a small boy, I found the learning curve to be a bit shallower than others may experience. Either way, once you've cracked it and you begin to see the true benefits of a load cell pedal, then things really begin to change. Did I see dramatically faster lap times in comparison to the T3PA pedal that came with the T300? No, I didn't. But I did notice it took me less time to learn a track and that it gave me a level of control that I found to be vastly superior to the RSGT set. And also, as an experienced car driver of many decades, the load cell pedal's learning curve felt more of an intuitive experience to me personally. Put simply, I just found that I could drive better with the load cell pedal. Of course, the elephant in the room is with greater braking power comes greater responsibility. By which I mean, if you think a couple of carpet grippers are going to keep the TLCM from sliding over the floor like a well-oiled seal, you are going to be disappointed. That true. Even putting the pedal set against a wall is probably not going to work as the tail end will likely pivot upwards under a sudden stabbing of the brake pedal during a moment of unexpected car maneuvering. No, the truth is, if you really want a load cell pedal in your life, and trust me, you do, then you are going to need a rig of some kind on which you can mount it securely. Be that a homemade rig, a wheel stand, or a complete rig. I've had them all, and it's a chicken and egg situation, I know. If you want to take your sim racing to the next level, you are going to want to buy a load cell pedal. But at the same time, you are going to need a sim rig or something similar to put it on. Otherwise, you are not going to enjoy the experience or get the most from the awesome braking potential offered by a load cell pedal. I already owned a GT Amiga Art and the pedals mounted to it with no issues at all, taking four meaty looking M6 screws and large side washers to hold it firmly to the rig. In the whole time I've used the TLCM on the GT Omega Art rig, sometimes for hours at a time, it hasn't moved a single millimeter. The pedals themselves are also adjustable with lateral adjustment for the brake and clutch pedal and a lateral and height adjustment offered for the accelerator pedal. I initially thought I would need to move these about a bit as the accelerator pedal felt too low and the brake too near the accelerator. As it turned out, these were the optimal places. So advise using the pedals for a week or so before you change anything, just in case it's already perfect. The clutch and accelerator both use all sensor technology to detect your input, which is something I don't fully understand, but apparently it's both better and more durable, so yay? But either way, my experience with both pedals tells me that Hall sensors are an improvement over the standard potentiometers that are fitted on cheaper pedal sets. So that's all good, right? But are there any downsides to owning the Tilly LCM? Yes, of course, there are a few. For example, I am one of those sim racers who used to race in socks. Partly because my house is nice and warm and partly because I couldn't be asked to go fetch my trainers from the front door every time I wanted to race. But on the TLCM, the solid load cell brake and the metal plate where you rest your feet are not at all sock friendly. If you wear socks to sim race, your feet will slip on the metal footrest and also feel cold. And if you try to push the heavier load cell brake in socks, you will eventually slip. In fact, I would advise anyone who's using this pedal to buy a cheap pair of gym plimsolls or something similar in the lightweight foot department in order to avoid injury and discomfort while using the TLCM. If you value your feet, fellow sim racer, get those cheap Primark plimmies today. Safe. Same. Aside from that, there is the cost, which is almost two thirds the price of a complete T300 RSGT wheel and pedal set. And there is the need to have some kind of rig to mount them. 
which when you add it up is not an insignificant investment in your sim racing hobby. So in summary, I would say for me personally, the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals have truly enhanced my sim racing experience. With the precision offered by Load Cell Technology and the fistful of customization options available to this unit, I am more than happy with the transition from the T3PA to the TLCM. Pedals have excelled my expectations in every aspect. They simply provide a level of immersion and control that have me coming back for more race after race. But don't forget, to get the best from these pedals, you will need a rig, wheel stand or self-made setup. And again, I have to stress this, carpet grippers are just not going to cut it with this product. And you will need some footwear, so say goodbye to sock racing. But if you already have a rig or want to get one, then the TLCM pedals will help you say goodbye to mediocre pedal experiences and help unleash the full potential of your virtual racing abilities. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of any future videos.